Good evening, everyone. I'm Wendell Jones, and welcome to this special economic forum of JCN this evening. And we are going to examine the economy of the Bahamas. Our economy in the Bahamas is going through some challenging times, and there is no doubt that the base of the economy of the Bahamas is too narrow. The tourism sector, which is concentrated in the northern Bahamas, has seen some challenging times as well and has not seen appreciable growth for many years. The financial services sector is in decline with excessive pressures being brought to bear on that industry by organizations in the developed countries of the world. The Bahamas, like many countries across the globe, is still reeling from the effects of the 2008 global financial crisis. Although the gross domestic product is about $10.5 billion, the national debt teeters around $7 billion. Unemployment is high and there is uncertainty <coughs> for the future. We have assembled an excellent panel here this evening of professionals in the financial services sector and in business to talk about the economy of the Bahamas. And it is our pleasure to have on our program this evening Mr. Franklin Wilson, who is chairman of the board of Sunshine Holdings, Mr. Gowen Bow, the chief financial officer of Fidelity Group, Mr. James Smith, the chairman of CFAL and former governor of the Central Bank, and he is also a former minister of state for finance. Mr. Julian Francis, who is the former governor of the Central Bank of the Bahamas and is involved with many other boards in our country, and Mr. Raymond Winder, the managing partner of Deloitte & Touche. Gentlemen, good evening and welcome to our program this evening. Evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, we are going to have uh, first uh, the panelists uh, who are going to give us their views on the uh, economy generally. And so we begin this evening with Mr. Franklin Wilson. Uh, who will give us his prognosis of the economy of the Bahamas. Mr. Wilson. My sense is that, um, that the numbers will show growth. And I believe the overall numbers will show growth uh, for several reasons. <clears throat> We're starting from an exceptionally low base. Um, Grand Bahama, for example, just I just don't see how Grand Bahama could go much lower. So when you start with a base as low as Grand Bahama is, pretty much anything that happens will be positive, and, and Grand Bahama is sufficiently a significant part of the whole that it will. Uh, affect the whole the numbers. I believe that uh, global economic forces are trending in a way which will be favorable for us in terms of attempting to attract foreign direct investment. And I think there will be some policy measures which will try to capitalize on that with, to some effect, um, particularly in the uh, second home market. Um, however, the figures will be, in my humble view, very deceptive because they will mask some very serious problems uh, which are having some very adverse consequences on a lot of people. You see, the, the fact is the macro numbers can show growth even at a time with unemployment going up, for example. Um, and, 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 and when uh, a lot of people are having some very serious difficulties, just making ends meet. So my sense is that the numbers will show uh, growth, uh, but if you really look at uh, people's sense of how it's affecting them, 
about how they feel. Do they feel good? Do they feel positive? Do they feel upbeat? Do they feel whatever's happening? I think uh, that will not be the case. And um, I hope I'm wrong, but that's my assessment. Mr. Bo. I, I think I um, concur. Economics is a game of sentiment, and it is he who feels it knows it. And so when you are talking about um, growing economies, that is usually spurred by confidence. And um, it is very difficult in tough times to convince a population that the way to come out of malaise or um, sort of lethargic growth is by consumption and by investment and by actually uh, taking a chance on how you grow the economy. I believe that when we look at the future of the Bahamas, I think we should not underscore the positives that we've had that we can actually build upon. So whilst there is going to be the ever-changing environment of tourism, financial services, and looking for new areas of development, we have to give that sense of optimism that says that what are some of the positive factors that can actually contribute to a resurgence of the Bahamian economy. Um, we speak a lot about the liquidity in the system um, in terms of um, cash that is sitting, if you will, um, underdeployed because persons are in that apprehensive state. And there has to be a mechanism that, if you will, unleashes that tiger by virtue of saying, how do people pool resources and focus their attention on now expansion? And whilst there is risk to every capital investment, the only way you will make a return is by taking risks. Zero risk, zero return. And so I believe when you look, we have a number of challenges in front of us, and our focus needs to not be on the negatives and those elements that are saying why it is a tough time. Our focus needs to be redirected to those elements as to how we overcome <coughs> this uh, environment that we're in. And I believe there is a sense of optimism, certainly uh, amongst the population, that things can happen. We see positive signs in terms of the touristic developments taking place in New Providence, but there are also developments in the islands that are now having, if you will, um, attention focused on them, and so that will help to expand the Bahamas and use in its resources. We see um, the slow decline in the unemployment numbers, although very, very high, which means persons are starting um, to get some employment back, but that we have to make sure it's not a temporary um, blip, if you will, and that is sustained. And ultimately, I believe that there needs to be those brave voices that come forward and say that we as a country should not talk ourselves down, but talk ourselves up. And if we are to remain the jewel of the Caribbean, then we have to act like the prince and princesses of the Caribbean, and, and we have to have that exuberance. So, I would say that there are certainly headwinds and challenges, but I would say that if we are collective in our way of thinking, we are willing to work together, pool resources, and actually look at the positive aspects, I think we will have an opportunity to actually have a resurgence in the economy. Mr. James Smith? Um, yes. Um, we're speaking, I think, essentially to economic growth, and over the past 10 years, this has been the primary challenge to this economy. What I find a little fascinating, though, over the 10-year period that we're looking at, that I'm looking at, is that, if you recall, in 2007-8 was this great uh, recession, almost called the Great Depression, the collapse of the housing market in the U.S., which basically took out all the economies in the Western Hemisphere, including the Bahamas. We saw it in a reduction in um, visitors, increase in unemployment. You may recall um, Atlantis laid off almost um, 2,000 people in one year and that type of thing. Now, between 2007, when it was happening, and 2012, you may also recall that the government's response to that um, was what they call or uh, fiscal stimulus, basically let's spend some money on public projects in order to stem the uh, growing unemployment. That is uh, 
uh, kind of a classic reaction um, short term. There are only two really major growth policies that they use uh, in the economy. One would be in the short term, uh, the Keynesian kind of uh, public spending to uh, stimulate growth. <coughs> or you've got the Chicago School where they, the monetarists who think that the government should stay out of the economy as much as it can, leave it to the private sector. But for the private sector to do it, you need to have the liquidity in the system, meaning they have to have possibly low interest rates to, to allow the private sector to get access to loans, to purchase equipment, and expand, et cetera. So basically, these are the two models that you operate on in the Western Hemisphere. Now, for some odd reason in the Bahamas, maybe because we're a small economy, after a couple of years of spending, using what I would call a Keynesian approach to dealing with growth, we ended up with an expanded deficit because clearly if you're spending more than you're bringing in, the deficit would grow. And uh, unemployment still remains stubbornly high. Um, but we continued spending, so we ended up now with unemployment and uh, heavy deficits. But something else happened, and I think this is crucial. Um, where you might have been able to switch to the other model, which might have been, okay, government, you spend enough, you're not getting the reaction you expected, back away. See if you can stimulate the public sector and allow them to um, create the jobs and uh, do the economic growth. This didn't happen, why? Because the banks got burnt in the sense that non-performing loans went from 4% of the total uh, portfolio to about 20%. And then we found in about the sixth year, we had almost a billion dollars in non-performing loans. So they got gun shy. Now, no economy can run unless you provide the fluid, the liquidity, the grease. And that's basically loans to businesses, individuals, et cetera, who create the demand you speak mm -hmm. about. And you see, this, hasn't, this was not happening then, nor is it happening now. Indeed, as of today, I believe that the excess liquidity, meaning the money that the banks collectively have to lend, is around a billion dollars. Ordinarily, they would have been lending about 200 million a year. You lend a guy some money for new equipment, he hires people to use the equipment, etc. So from my point of view, there are other things to explain this uh, no growth. But I think the, the greatest uh, impediment to growth in the Bahamas is actually the non-access by the uh, private sector, and even to some extent the government um, the sector as well, because I think the Canadian banks have a limit on how much they can lend to um, the government based on the uh, ratios, mm -hmm. et cetera. And it's not blaming the banks because, bear in mind, they have sh uh, stakeholders, uh, their shareholders, the public whose money they have, et cetera. And so the question is, how, if you think that that's a kind of a policy option, how do you get them to relax and perhaps get back in the credit market? And it seemed to me you have to then address the thing they fear most, you know, the risk. And you can mitigate that risk in several ways. I think the government could um, speak to them about it, cajole them a little bit, or give them some assurances. But unless um, some small, medium, or large firm can continue to walk into the bank and say, look, Christmas is coming, I need new inventory, or I think I want to expand, I see an opportunity, and can get it, you're going to continue having this. And it's, it's, it's easy to overlook in the Bahamas, you see, because A, we don't own the banking system. And so, you know, um, getting them to do um, what I think in other countries you tend to speak to the head of the banks because you uh, you know them, the Minister of Finance would speak to the chairman, et cetera, et cetera. But these guys answer to, to another drummer. And uh, I believe until we are able to address um, significantly that problem, we're going to continue to just drift along. Thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Um, let's uh, go to Julian Francis now for your take on the current state of the economy of the Bahamas. Well, I have to say, I'm not really that optimistic about the short term. Um, 
for a, a number of reasons. One, one is that um, what I believe um, has always driven our economy is what is going on around us on the outside. If, if we all remember, uh, you know, when we, when we talk about good times in our economy, it's when there's a lot of money around. And generally speaking, what that is, you know, what it, that's driven by mainly is um, fairly strong economies around us, which generate the kind of um, investment <coughs> and demand which drives our economy. We are not an internally, an internally driven economy. And, um, you know, I suppose that to some extent we can, we can change that over time. I, I think we can become more of that, but, but that takes time. And in any event, I'm not so sure that it'll ever be, that is the internal driver of the economy, it'll ever be big enough to satisfy the, um, you know, the standard of living that the Bahamas has become accustomed to. And so um, I believe that the return to any kind of sustainable growth in, in our economy, and maybe return is, is being a little bit generous, because you know one can argue that it's never really been uh, been there, but the the the, the key to any uh, real sustainable significant growth in our economy, which is going to be enough to you know create the again the lifestyle that Bahamians um, want and, and and at some point have have known is. Um, reshaping our economy. We've got to become an economy which is far more efficient, um, which I feel uh, needs to learn how to, to live a bit more in line with our capabilities. Uh, what do I mean by that? Well, um, over, say, the last 15 to 20 years, we have continued to pile up debt uh, to the point that today uh, we are probably something like, if you look at the debt to GDP ratio, I think we're in excess of 80% now. Um, I, I don't think anybody at this, on this panel will argue that this is sustainable. And I'm not talking theory now, I'm telling, I'm saying that if we don't figure out how to get our economy on a more um, s stable, vibrant basis, um, an economy which is more competitive, which can command um, in the external markets better borrowing terms and better trading terms and so on, an economy which diversifies itself more. Um, you know, we have still been dependent on the traditional sectors, um, and we really haven't grown any significant sector of the economy which is competitive in today's environment. You know, some of the new economies which are working around us. Unless we can do these things, the truth is, um, we are not going to be compared to uh, some of the others that we usually look at to, you know, to sort of benchmark ourselves. I don't think we're going to, to be able to, um, you know, to emerge uh, as a real powerhouse of an economy. We'll always be um, trying to figure out how to make the best of what's going on around us. And and really, I firmly believe that unless we come to terms with that, unless we accept that we do need to make very significant adjustments in our, um, the way we organize, how we train our people, how we open ourselves up to competition, um, those kinds of things, how we accept a bit better um, the constraints which from time to time, you know, we, we should be be, um, be facing, uh, rather than just thinking that we can just borrow ourselves out of it. That, that's not true. And, and I was listening, in fact, to a program of yours yesterday, 
um, the view which was expressed that um, um, we do need to provide resources and money mainly to the economy in order to to get the economy going and that's true but it can't indefinitely come from a public sector which is already overborrowed it cannot happen because nobody we get to the point where nobody is going to lend money to us any any longer uh, we're not there yet and I, i'm not suggesting we'll be there you know if, um, in a year or two but if we continue at this rate, we'll get there before too long. And um, my, my message is, is simply, I think we've got to, this is the time we've got to take stock of where we are and make some hard choices. Um, and, and I hope we get a chance to touch on, you know, on some of that tonight. And just the last comment I would make is this, as an opening comment. I, I believe that a, a number of Bahamians believe this, they see this, and I think that they expect the government to, uh, to bite the bullet. They expect the government to make some tough choices. I don't think that they, you know, there are those, of course, who expect, you know, all they want is a job or something, and, and believe me, I, I, I understand that. But I'm saying that, um, you know, that doesn't work. Uh, the government can't continue to be the big brother who employs everybody and keeps everybody happy. It, it just does not work. And until, you know, we tell ourselves that and really understand it, I, I, I don't think, I think we are going to continue to slide unless we make these adjustments. Thank you, Mr. Francis. Uh, Ray Winder? You know, it's interesting. I think <clears throat> there's something true about everything that has been said here tonight. Clearly what Sir Franklin said about uh, being in a position uh, to attract um, ongoing investment, that is true. But I think the underlining point that everyone kind of made, uh, directly and indirectly, is the fact that we don't have a situation where the general population is benefiting from whatever's happening in the Bahamas. Yes, we may attract in, uh, uh, investors, <clears throat> yes, second homes, but the, the real big issue, the big question for us is, how do we get to, to share whatever wealth comes to the Bahamas to the greater population? And I think it goes back, in order to make that happen, I think it goes back to something what uh, Julian said, competitiveness. We, we live in a global world, and as Julian said, it's going to be a long time before internal investment become a major driver of wealth in the Bahamas. Today and for some time to come, that wealth is going to be driven primarily by external forces. Okay? And so we need to have certain things in place so we can spread what I call the, the wealth throughout this country. And I have identified a couple of things that I think that is critical that we look at in the short term in order to stop some of the concerns that Julian mentioned, energy cost. Energy cost is a huge problem for this country. The average Bahamian is just paying too much in electricity, and we don't have that cost to a point where we can attract any kind of investors. Anyone looking at the Bahamas as a possible place for investment has a concern with energy. We've got to fix that, not next week, not next year. That has to be on the agenda today. Our national investment policy. For too long, we have been governed our country through a group of men and women called the cabinet. It is time that we get serious about what we need to be in place to attract investors. Too many investors are not prepared to come to the Bahamas because they're not sure at the end of the day what those policies are going to be. One cabinet comes in, and they said the policies are this. The next cabinet comes in, and they change the policies. We've got to ingrain in law what we would like to see relative to attracting investors. The legislation has been around for quite some time. That has to happen. That will begin to attract some investors who have just passed by the Bahamas. Land reform. Sir Franklin will know. Land is a big issue in this country. And it is time that we tackle that problem in order for 
huge amount of land that is in the hands of generation, but people can't do anything with it simply because of how it's not registered. We've got to address that problem because land happens to be one of the greatest wealth. And as a country, we fall far short in terms of being in a position to truly manage that resource the way it ought to be managed. So we've got to make that, pro we've got to make that problem go away. Tax reform. Putting VAT in place is not tax reform. When one thinks about tax reform, one has a, to look at both sides of the, of the coin. Yes, tax is a means of collecting revenue. But tax is also a way of driving economic activities through incentives. We've got to be in a better position to assess the cost of incentives and be in a better position to come up with new incentives. You know, there's a, a, a committee in the US, and every time a congressman or a senator puts forward an idea, that committee has the ability to assess that idea in terms of the costs and the benefits to the overall economy. We need a similar committee in the Bahamas. We need to know, especially based on some of the numbers that Julian just mentioned, we got to be able to assess at any given point in time where we are as a country in terms of benefits and in terms of revenue. <clears throat> and we need to be able to do that so we can avoid some of the challenges we talked about. Thank you very much, Mr. Winder. Well, you've heard the opening statements of the uh, people on our panel here this evening. And uh, we are going to go into some details uh, uh, coming out from uh, what they had to say uh, this evening. But we have to take a break. Uh, so we take our first commercial break on our economic forum, and we'll come right back.